Hey guys, Pin here. Welcome back, or if this is your first time, welcome to the channel. Sorry, just as I started my iPad, decided to nearly go to sleep. Alright, uh, today, instead of taking you out to take photos, mostly because I haven't been out to take photos that much since I've just moved into this place that you would have seen in the last video when I went through what's in my camera bag for this year. All right, but now that it is the start of a new year, and I have had and there has been a whole bunch of camera releases in the past six to six months or so, like the Canon's R5, the R6, Sony's A7R4, Nikon Z6 and Z7 Mark IIs. I thought now that I've had my Canon EOS R, I know it's two years old since, just over two years old since it's got released, but since I've had it for just over a year now, it'd be a good time to give a review on it from a landscape photography for photography bleh, bleh photography perspective because I've been using it I'd say 90% of the time for photography and a little bit for street but yeah mostly for landscape sorry 90% of the time for landscape photography and the rest of the time for street but it's since, since I have had that chance to use it quite extensively I can give you a first-hand perspective on what it's like if you're a landscape photographer and you're considering a camera body in the Canon mirrorless range first of all Actually, I'm not going to go into the specs too much of the EOS R because there's lots of articles online, lots of YouTube videos of you know much more qualified and professional photographers than myself that have gone through the specs and where it has positives and negatives. From my experience using it though, the specs come down to what you use it for, right? The main reason I got this is it's a lot lighter than a 5D Mark IV, which it's effectively replacing. It's got a 30 megapixel sensor, which is an upgrade from my previous Nikon D5600, which was a crop sensor at 24, and it's mirrorless. Right. Part of the reason I waited on the mirrorless industry to grow a bit before investing in that is I didn't want to lug around a big, heavy-ass DSLR, and this is significantly lighter than any DSLR on the market today. I'm 99% sure of that because I picked up the 5D Mark IV and it weighed just the body alone weighed significantly more than this camera. Sorry, just keep looking at the iPad because I want to make sure I stay on track and don't go off in 50 million directions as we all know I have a tendency to do. And today I want to try and keep it on point for you. So specs wise, it does have a 30 megapixel sensor with the Digic 8 processor, which I believe the sensor is from the 5D Mark IV, but it's a new processor. Right, not having used the 5D Mark IV, but having seen pictures from it, um, I can't fault the quality that comes out of the sensor. They're amazing quality pictures, and they are a huge step up compared to what I was capturing with the Nikon previously. So in that respect, I can't fault it. All right, and what else have we got? So if you are interested in the video side of it, it can do 4K at 30, F 30 frames per second, but, and I tested this out of curiosity, it does have that 1.8 percent, that 1.8 crop factor, which is quite significant. If especially if you want to do wide-angle videography, I should say, as most of my videos are with the camera set on the tripod, like the GoPro is right now. I'm, I'm filming with the GoPro that way I can actually show you guys the camera. Sorry, my phone just went off, and it's meant to be on silent. If you are interested in videography, then depending on what style of shooting you do, it may or may not be applicable to you. I know it can do 60 frames per second at full HD, the at full HD, and 30 frames per second at 4K, but with that 4K top. ISO range-wise, natively it does 100 to 50,000, 51,200, I think it is. If I'm wrong, I'll put it down below. And I've just put it to 50. You can lower it down to 50 ISO or even bump it up to 100,000 and even 200,000 as well, I would think. No, not I would think. I think you can. Um, I've never had to go that high, though, even when I was doing street. The most I ever went to was like 2,500, maybe even... Yeah, I think 2,500 because I'll get into the lens because I'm not actually reviewing the lens, but the lens got in-body, got in lens stabilization. It can't be in-body, right? Which... Is one good thing to mention about the camera now because I know that when this camera was released there were quite a few for want of a better term criticisms about it one being single card slot all right um for me it's not an issue I mean if you it, I know this camera can handle UHS 2 
This is a UHS-1 as you can see because there's only that one single row of pins there. Pin is talking about pins. <laughs> Sorry, it's an old joke that I've been getting since I was a kid, nothing new. Alright, then there was this touch bar on the back which I know was very contentious. I have disabled it. That way I don't risk accidentally touching it for any way, shape or form. Because up here I've got my, this dial is my shutter speed, this dial is my aperture. And on this lens, which is the 24-105, uh, yeah, USM, etc. I've changed that so that the dial on the lens changes the ISO. But since 99% of the time my camera is on a tripod, I just keep it to ISO 100. And then adjust my shutter speed and aperture accordingly. And so far I've never really had to change, change that. And so now that I've had this for a year, and there has been those cameras I mentioned earlier that have been released. I, I'm, I started thinking, but also a couple colleagues, both at work and other photographers have asked, would I actually upgrade from the camera? Because if you compare this to what's currently out there, it may not have all the features that other photographers would want. All right. And my simple answer is at this point in time, based on camera bodies alone, no, I wouldn't upgrade it because I mean, as I said, most of the time my camera's on a tripod, the images that come out have been amazing. I mean, miles ahead of what I was getting with the Nikon. And I'm not bagging Nikon, but it's just when you're using a crop sensor camera with an average lens, you're never gonna get as good of a picture as you use with a full frame sensor and a decent lens. I'm not saying, and, and granted this is a kit lens, but the images that come out of there are still, you know, top notch. I have no doubt that should have put a much better lens on there, I will get much better, much clearer images and sharper images, I should say. Right, which is, that does sort of lead into whether I would or wouldn't upgrade. If it's just based on bodies alone and what has been released. Right, so after this one came out, you had the RP, which was a 20 megapixel sensor, which was like, Canon marketed it as an entry level full frame mirrorless camera and for someone who wants to get into photography and they want to get you know a full frame sensor and not crop that's a perfect camera to start off with because it doesn't you don't because you're paying you know a much lower price compared to even this the eos r let alone the r5 and the r6 or sony's cameras you're getting enough features to give you a taste of what's current of what photography is without having to invest your whole you know get another mortgage out so to speak All right, but since then canon's released the r5 which is their Currently, I would I would call it their flagship mirrorless camera because you've got the like 45 megapixel sensor. You can shoot 8K raw. You've got it was like 20 frames per second on electronic shutter mode, and you can. But but the big thing about it is the price tag. If you were to ask me today, would I happily would I invest you know six and a half grand into a camera body? I would instantly say no. And that's purely because I cannot justify the cost of such a such a piece of equipment. And I'd rather much rather keep that body and invest that same amount of funds into more lenses. Right, but then the question came, what about the R6? Well, the R6 is 20 megapixels, this camera's 30, so I don't see why I should downgrade the number of megapixels when my goal is landscape photography and to print images as large as possible. If I was doing more videos over photos, and you want a better low light performance or for street photography and event photography and whatnot where you don't have to worry about printing you know 30 by 20 prints then i kind of make the argument for the r6 especially over something like the rp if you need the higher frame rates and the better video features but unless you need the features of the r6 i wouldn't even i i on a personal level i wouldn't invest in that one either because there is nothing that camera offers me that i couldn't do with my my eos r Right, from that perspective alone, the R5 is just simply too expensive and I'd rather invest the money in lenses because I could easily get two of the lenses I wanted for this price of that body and then if I did get that body, I'd be stuck with a kit lens. All right, and talk to any photographer, if you talk, they'll say get an average body and a good lens instead of a great body and an average lens. All right, lenses are a much more important investment than a camera body is any day of the week. And you'll often see if they break down a budget, predominantly more of it will go to lenses than the camera body itself. So, but now that I am doing videos as I, you know, I'm filming for you guys on a weekly basis now, 
this camera even does what I need video wise 99% of the time because it's normally sat here on the tripod in front of me at 24 frames a second and I don't need and I shoot in full HD I don't shoot in 4k so I don't have to worry about that 1.8 crop factor and I don't do slow motion stuff the way you know amazing creators like Peter McKinnon or Peter Lindgren would do and if you want to see some really cool videos I'd say go check those guys out don't um, I'm not the right guy to look at for amazing videos those guys are I do more you know take you out with me while I go shoot, go shoot photos sort of case so from even a video perspective I have no reason to change it because this camera does everything I need it to do the only reason I would consider upgrading this camera or from this camera body I should say right, is down to what lenses are released by Canon for this mount all right i know granted i can get an adapter and use their previous mount the ef which will go with their full frame dslr bodies but it's almost like getting old technology it's like prime example iphone's released the iphone 12 in the past few months i'd be going back and getting an iphone 9 or an iphone 10. right like why shortchange myself when i know that new lenses are either out or coming out at least i hope they're coming out soon and risk not getting the best quality i can so if i were to change lenses away from this 24 to 105 which don't get me wrong it has done an amazing job for me so far but sometimes i do wish i could go wider than 24 mil and sometimes i do wish i could zoom more than 100 mil and i know there's in the interim there's workarounds like if i want to go wider on a 20 and i'm capped at 24 is the widest i can go i can always do a panel and you know stitch them together in lightroom but sometimes that's not an ideal option because if you've got waves, the waves are never going to be the same as you take you know, swiftly a camera around. And then if you had to zoom in to 100 but then crop even more, you are losing a lot of the resolution that the sensor gives you. So if I were to change, it would be dependent on Canon releasing a 16-35 to f4. I know they've got the 15-35 to f2.8, but again, that price is astronomical. And also, as my camera's often on the tripod, I don't need to invest in a fast in a fast lens. I know professional photographers will always recommend get as fast a glass as you can. But at this stage of my photography journey slash career, whatever it is you want to call it. But at this stage, I could not justify an f2.8 price tag over an f4 considering my tripod. My sorry, the camera is always on a tripod. So definitely be a 16 to 35. I know they've got the 15 to 35, but it's an f2.8 and that price is still too high for me to justify a 24 to 70 which is you know your standard worker walk walk around lens which covers everything so that would be great for the landscape and especially for street as well and also when i'm filming here for you guys so it covers all three bases that i need in one hit and a 70 to 200 i know they have announced the f4 70 to 200 and i've seen it in the flesh and the great thing about the 70 to 200 f4 is the size of it it is Fold it away, it is about the same size as this 24 to 105, and that's the best part about it. Whereas, if you look at a 24 to sorry, a 70 to 200 from any other brand, they're about that long at best, right? Which takes up more space in the bag, weighs a lot more, and if you want to do long hikes or long walks, that weight will eventually get to you. If Canon does release a 16 to 35 f4 and a 24 to 70 or around those those ranges f4 or at least if it's on the roadmap and there's announcements this year i should say then i will happily stick with the eos r if not then i may look elsewhere and that's purely because i want to have more versatility without having to take out a mortgage to get the lenses that i want to get the only one that's available right now is that 70 to 200 f4 I have seen the 60 to 35 f4 is on the roadmap, but I haven't seen anything about the 24 to 70. If I'm wrong, please correct me, and I'll be the first one to say, "Yep, yeah, you know what? It's on the roadmap. I didn't see it. I'm blind." Which, as possible, I'm not wearing my glasses right now. But if they don't have that, then I would consider swapping systems because I'm not overly heavily invested in Canon at this point. This is the only Canon gear I've got. It's the EOS and the EOS. It's the EOS R and the 24 to 105 because it came as a kid. And as a starting point in the full frame in the full frame market market full frame equipment it's perfect as a starting point it's perfect it does damn near everything you needed to do when i went traveling in thailand for two weeks it covered everything i needed 
when I wanted to go wider, I just simply did what I mentioned earlier. You know, you do a panel and you stitch them together, which I will, I do promise I will make a video on that for you. It literally comes down to, are those lenses going to be announced and released within the next two years? I know with COVID, things are not as easy to produce as they were pre-COVID, but at least if there's an announcement that is coming, I am patient enough that I can wait for it. But if not, I probably would go the Sony range. Because if you look at the Sony, not so much the body, but the lenses available for Sony mirrorless range. There were a few things about Sony I'm not a fan of. One of them is the LCD touchscreen on the back is not touchscreen. If you want to touch, you know, for using the menus, it is for dragging the AF points around, but not for actually selecting menus and a menu option. And I think that was the biggest fault that everybody says about Sony is their menu system is not the best in the world. But as I'm quite a not, I'm not trying to brag here, I'm just you know repeating what many colleagues have told me over the years is that since I, the fact I love my IT stuff is that since I'm a bit of an IT nerd, learning menu systems and setting up the way they the way I want them to be set up is not too hard for me and it's something I'm happy to spend my time doing. If it's not something you guys are happy to do, I mean that's a choice you guys have to make, but I've got no beef with it. iPad stay on, please. Okay. And so that is the only system I would look at at this point in time if the lenses I would like to get from Canon are not available and that's literally it, it's down to the lens choices it's not because I think Sony is a better camera or so they have a better sensor I think Canon's got some of the best sensors and the colors more importantly that come out of it are, the be are better than the other two but if the lenses I want are not within reach then it's hard to stay with the system you know it's that's the only way direction I'll go right. and also because if I did want to do a bit more video work just for this you know out of curiosity learning trying something new then at least with Sony you do have more options or more capabilities in the bodies I should say than you do with Canon unless you go for like the R5 or the R6 which even the R6 at 20 megapixels that cost is like what, three four grand or something just for the body and I'm, I'm, like I said, I'd much rather invest those funds on lenses than a new body when I'm not going to use the features. It's like buying a five bedroom mansion when it's just me. From my perspective, uh, right now, this camera is great. The lens that comes with it is great. I'm not going to move away from this system anytime soon because it does exactly what I need, what I needed to do. I mean, if you do wedding, portrait, event, sports photography i can understand why you wouldn't use this camera because the frame rate's not there and especially for wedding photographers they want that dual car slot as redundancy which this camera simply doesn't offer all right i'm not going to get into the debate as to whether or not they should have that's being nutted out so many times when the camera was first released and since it's been released that it's flogging a dead horse at this point but for someone who goes to one or two locations every now and then or I try to go out every fortnight at minimum with their camera on the tripod and I've never had an SD card fault on me. I've had a micro SD card fault on me on my old phone. But for someone who's never had this camera or this SD card fault on me, I have I don't need those extra features of the high frame rate or the high frame rate when you're shooting pictures or videos or any or any of the other features because I just simply would never use them. Right, that's literally all it comes down to from my perspective I would not need more than what this camera currently offers and that's why I'm not going to upgrade unless I can't see unless it looks like the lenses I would like to get which some often call the holy trinity are available and it's that's literally all, it, all there is to it got nothing bad to say about this camera I know all the criticisms that were with it I researched it like no tomorrow before I invested in it because even just investing in this camera felt it took a lot of decision making and twing and fro should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I, and in the end I said, you know what, I'll never find out till I do. But unless the lenses I want are within reach within the next two years, then I'll look elsewhere. And that's literally all it, all it comes down to. It's got nothing wrong with the camera, it's the lenses that are available. The camera body, perfect. I've got this camera set up exactly the way I want it. For, for landscape photography, it's perfect. For other styles, like I mentioned, sports, wildlife, wedding event I can understand why videographers that want to do lots of slow-mo and not and have 4k without the crop factor I can understand why 
but a landscape photographer who does street on the side as well I got nothing bad to say about this and I would happily recommend it to anyone who's interested in doing landscape photography doesn't need that high frame rate doesn't need 4k without a crop factor anyone who doesn't need the stuff that I don't use if they said should I buy it I'll say yes if that's if that's the best that they can afford I will say yes but I would also tell them to bear in mind if you do start wanting to move further down the track for things like higher frame rates, videos, wanting the dual card slots for redundancy, then you should consider looking elsewhere. But if you're like myself and that's not really relevant, buy it. I have no beef in recommending it. I will not say anything bad about this camera for my from what I need it for because it's never faulted me. Even the battery life in this thing is amazing. I've got three batteries for it and I think I've used the second one once. And that's because I was doing a day trip in Thailand where we left at 6 a.m. I got home at 6 p.m. And I probably took a couple hundred photos that day alone because we're going to so many locations. And I wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything because I didn't know when I could go back. And now with COVID, who knows when I can go back. <sighs> anyway, yeah, the battery life. I think I did 800 shots in one day once and that only then did the battery drain out. Otherwise, I, it's, it's faultless. I can't, I can't fault it. I haven't seen how long it can go with videos, but at the same time, I don't do videos that much. So for me, that's a non-issue. But beyond that, I think I've repeated myself 50 million times now, haven't I? Close to it. Would I upgrade at this point in time? No. Would I recommend it to anyone doing my style of photography or just wants to get started? I want something better than the RP? Yes. I hope that's been a pretty in-depth review of what the camera's like from a landscape photographer's perspective. All right, I can't fault it. If you guys do have any questions about the camera, let me know. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop fidgeting with it because I know I have been for the past few minutes. All right, and if you guys do have liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up because it does help the channel out, and I do appreciate any help you guys can give me. And if you do want to keep up with what's going on as well, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that little bell that's next to it because that way you'll always get a notification when a new video goes out. My target, my goal this for the next few months is to try and get a video out once a week, 6 p.m. Wednesday, six, sorry, 6 p.m. Sydney time on Wednesdays. But yeah, at this point in time, that's my goal is 6 p.m. Sydney time every Wednesday night. That's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks again for watching and that's pin for now and I'll see you on the next video. Have a good night, everyone.